everyone. It is Ryan Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. You see me this morning, now you see me this afternoon or this evening, or it's morning for you, but it's evening for me and morning for you, but wherever you're watching, it doesn't matter because we bring you the very, very, very best content from the very best flyers in the world in Belgium. Wow, they're known for the superstars. I'm going to tell you guys, I wanted to get on here much earlier today, but the gentleman I was with, I was mind blown. The pigeon quality was 10, but pigeon common sense, the learning, this man, this is another superstar, rising to the top levels. Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions, we wanna bring you the best. Guys, for this little bit of time here, enjoy common sense pigeon knowledge from a man who started from when he was just a boy, self-taught, rise all the way up, and he, he just kicks butt. I hate to say it, guys. I am going to, before I rotate the camera, I want to take a moment to let everyone know, right now at Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions, we have the champion of Hungary, Zolt Pinter. His auction is running now online at Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. And from Belgium, Stefan Steenberg, a small selection of pigeons there. Check them all out. Both auctions are running. Remember, all bids are in Canadian dollars. And guys, sit back and enjoy, because you're gonna meet the man they call Chris. We've done two Chris's in one day. <laughs> let me turn the camera, oh, hold on, let me turn this camera around. And, don't worry, I haven't done it yet, Chris. The, the camera's not on you just yet, my friend. <laughs> There's the name, Chris De Baker from Belgium. This is what, West Flanders, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Are, are there better flyers in the West or in the East, Flanders? <laughs> <laughs> Not a difficult to question that. Uh, no? No, they are in West Flanders. They're in West Flanders, are the best Flanders, isn't that right? Okay. No, I think the guys from East Flanders doesn't like it. <laughs> well, we don't have to worry about them. They're no, over on no, the no. East side. Um, <laughs> if you guys have cr questions for, for Chris, now is the time to put them in. But Chris, before we start this, before I get to any questions, give us a little rundown on yourself. A little bit about your pigeon history. Oh, um, it's already a long, a long history because I started racing pigeons when I was 10 years old. So I was a young guy. Nobody in my family uh, ever had uh, pigeons. No one was racing pigeons. So um, I started racing, racing pigeons all on myself. And uh, yeah, it was not so, uh, so easy in the beginning because uh, I didn't make good results. And... Uh, uh, I was asking some, um, you know, some help from other fanciers, but it was not so easy. But because they didn't help me, so I did it on on my own, and I find my way to the to the better results. And uh, I think I can say no at that moment. We have the good results. I'm very happy with the results of that year because. Uh, we are champion of Belgium. Um, we won the Belgian championship for with uh, all pigeons and uh, great middle distance. We have all, we have also some um, uh, ace pigeons in the national championship, and uh, as usual, uh, also a lot of ace pigeons in the provincial uh, championship. Uh, we also were uh, general champion in the, the province here in West Flanders, so uh, it will be it will be very difficult to to do the the same thing next year. But I'm very happy with that. Yeah, because you said next year on the first race you have to be right at the top to do this all if for I yourself. If I don't have the first prize in the first race next year, that will be not so good as this year. Because this year we have um, 45 first prizes in, uh, in races. So every weekend we have at least one uh, first prize. Uh, except two weekends, but at uh, one of these weekends then we have five national on a long distance race, uh, Kaur. Um, and also that pigeon, when, uh, the fourth national ace pigeon from Belgium this year. Guys, Chris is a, is a super, super flyer. Um, one thing I'm going to say, which is real nice, again, he's, he's like a surge of an outsider. You self-taught yourself. You started at the bottom, mm -hmm. and you had to learn your way. Yeah. And the way, uh, so at the beginning, you start, it struggles, it struggles, it struggles, and then you have a bit more time, or, or you get a little older, mm -hmm. you find your way. And did you start off, what did you first start off mastering? Was it sprint racing? Yeah, um, 
I start racing with short distance, uh, the really sprint, uh, sprint races here in the region and uh, in different village uh, we race uh, only the short distance, Some distance till uh, 180 kilometers. These were my favorite uh, distance. Um, but after a, a, a while, um, we won all the championships for um, short distance races. And um, then they will make one championship from of the different clubs. And then I stopped not I stopped not uh, racing short distance, but I also raced uh, the medal distance races. Um, so when you when you winning everything in the sprint races around, uh -huh. and and you start with you had no help, you learned your way. Uh -huh. You learn your way, and nobody around's helping you. No. Could these people imagine that you could get to that level just on the sprint races? Um, it was also very, very difficult for uh, not only for me in the beginning, but also when, when we won the, the championship. Then it was therefore because I won at, uh, in, in different club the championship that they say, oh, oh it's always for the, from the, for the same guy. Uh, so we don't make five different uh, championships. We will work together and we will make one championship. Um, in the beginning, I was only racing for to win the uh, the championships. After that, after that story, I stopped racing championship because it was not uh, uh, how, how do you call it? It was not not so good anymore. I wanna I wanna know when the championship. I wanna have the the, the good pigeons. So then I start racing to have ace pigeons because uh, an ace pigeon for me that's an extraordinary pigeon. That's not a pigeon who did one shot, who did one first prize, but who make different uh, very top prices and to be one of the best pigeons. So for me that was more important to have ace pigeons than win championship. And uh, when you switch from sprint pigeons to middle distance, did you change the pigeons? Did you go buy yeah. new pigeons? Yeah. Um, in the beginning, uh, as I said, it, it was only for sprint and sprint pigeons. And then I, in 2001, I tried to go with the same, with the same pigeons to the middle distance. So a, a middle distance racer was not a problem when it was a tailwind. Um, but when, when it was a headwind, then my pigeons had some problems. They couldn't have uh, these races for 400, for for 500 kilometers, it was so. It was a little bit too difficult for them. So at the end of this season, I uh, must have uh, pigeons who can also this longer distance, and I bought some uh, some hands of, from my friend. Uh, we studied together with the, from Rick Coles. We were studying together in Antwerp, and he was very. He was one of the best fanciers then at that moment. Um, to race with his hands on the middle distance and I bought uh, uh, three or four hands I think and uh, from one of these hands uh, the, in 2002 I had my uh, first provincial victory in the middle distance with Lambic and that was the daughter of, um, of Bieke, uh, granddaughter of Bieke from uh, Rick, Rick Coles. So that was the start to, to have the good pigeons, the good ace pigeons. He was also second uh, provincial ace pigeon that year. Uh, this, the same pigeon who won the first provincial was also a uh, second provincial ace pigeon. Um, and then I saw that's the, that's the way I have to follow um, because it was an extraordinary good pigeon. And so I tried to have every year uh, to have uh, ace pigeons. Ace pigeons. So results are going good, you're bringing in some new pigeons. Uh, you, you, you get stronger for the headwinds, mm -hmm. you, 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 you strengthen up the pigeons, uh, and you've been very successful. Now how, before I get to some of these people's questions, because there's lots of questions already, how many years have you been at the top now? Because uh, you are in Belgium, everyone I mention your name to, you know, mm -hmm. he's super, he's number one. Mm -hmm. How many seasons have you been really on the top? Well, it starts in 2002, that was my uh, first provincial victory, my, per, my, my first uh, ace pigeon. And uh, it came all, all every year, it came, goes better and better. Um, so I can say last 15 years, um, I'm in the provincial top. 
uh, and also last year's when because I start racing also national races uh, I think it's seven seven years ago uh, now it's also on the national level uh, that we raise that that business and it goes very well first question I have is from Heather Green from the United States she says what advice would you give a person new in racing pigeons oh uh, this week there were I have I have a visit from two new fanciers who asked me to, to how to start racing pigeons and how to, to um, the first thing I can say don't make the same stupid uh, fault I did and uh, I was starting with all different pigeons from all different fanciers and uh, it was a big mistake so I should say don't, don't do it if you want to start racing pigeons Try to have um, a lot of eggs from the race pigeons from a very good fancier and try to start door uh, uh, with, with that with that pigeons. Um, try to have a, a lot of pigeons to breed this this youngsters. When the youngsters are old enough to separate them from the parents, then uh, uh, kill the the pigeons or let them go, and then you can start with these youngsters from a very good fancier. Uh, and it, it, it's also possible you have uh, these eggs for a very good price, I think. Okay, it's a good, good thing to look at. Michael Peevler asks, how do you feel about eye sign, reading a pigeon's eye for breeding or do you believe in it? I don't know anything about it. So I, I, I don't believe in it. The only thing I believe that is when I have a good, uh, a good pigeon, I will pair him up. I will couple him with uh, with a good hen. Um, good with good give me mostly good. You have more chance to have good pigeons than you have uh, good to good. But the eyes, um, I'm not a Chinese guy who is looking with something in the eye from the. I don't know anything about the eyes. I'm sorry. And and guys, I will tell you, I was here today. It was rainy, overcast in a in the lofts. It's never bright in the lofts. The eyes that Chris's pigeons have, uh, I would love to photograph them because I think they're super rich. For you people wondering, well, are, does, his, does his super pigeons have super eye sign? Yes, they do. You can see it. If you are into reading eyes, this man has excellent, rich, rich eyes, which I like. Mark Carnwell asks, hey, Ryan, I was wondering if Chris knows about pigeon herpy virus. Do you know about this virus? Herpes virus? Yes. Yes. Um, I have seen it once. Um, I think it's now eight or ten years ago. Um, I bought a hen. It was a very expensive, expensive hen. Um, and in that hen, I bought also the herp the herpes virus. So you bought the hen. You bring it in. Yeah. You bring it in. And okay. the first young youngster she bred um, in the nest there was not. You couldn't see anything. But after two weeks, when I separate them from the parents. Um, they go down, they, they goes down and you, I saw the yellow things around the eyes and uh, the mouth, and the, the mouth and I didn't know what it was. So I killed this, uh, this youngster and the second round I read from this hen, the youngsters were already sick in the nests. Huh? And the third round I, I, I ringed, they, they couldn't grow up. They were when they were eight or ten days old. They, I already have a problem with them. So then um, I, I went to the vet, and then the vet the vet told me that's a herpes virus. And uh, <laughs> he said I never had herpes before. <laughs> oh no! Um, yeah, but I didn't know yeah. it. Either. So then I was starting <laughs> vaccinating all my pigeons for herpes virus. Mm -hmm. so the the, uh, the vet gave me that advice from. Uh, I know it's not in your pigeons, but you bring it now in your pigeons and maybe you don't see it in your pigeons, but it's possible they uh, can um, carry it. Can, they can carry it. So you have to vaccinate all your pigeons. So I started, I do it, I did it for, uh, for uh, no, no, I'm lying. The first year I didn't do it, but well, I'm so in this round of youngsters, I had a problem with a lot of, a lot, some of these youngsters uh, became ill, they came, they have the, the, the problems and then I have vaccinated them and I have from the advice from the vet vaccinate all my pigeons for two years and then the, that problem was, was finished. But um, when you have 
that problem with the herp herpes virus, mm -hmm. the only thing that I can advise is vaccinating. Okay. Very good. Uh, Mahai, Mahai Pigeon says, very good fancier super pigeons. Yes, I agree. Eddie Ortiz from uh, North Carolina says, how many birds does he enter in races? So how, how large is your young bird team? Um, till uh, four, five, years, five years ago, I only have 36 widowers in okay. widowhood, and I was only raised with, the 30, with these 36 cocks. Um, then I was start to raise hens, and after two years I had to raise with 24 hens. And uh, since uh, 2000, yeah, since 2000, I raised only uh, also in that loft with the hens, also with the cocks. So in that loft, I um, raised a total widowship. Widows, widowhood, yeah. Wid um, so that's 24 cocks, 24 hens is 48. And then the other lot, uh, 36 uh, cocks. So you fly 36 cocks, regular widowhood, mm -hmm. and then you fly like a double widowhood yep. with uh, another, what did you say? Four, uh, 24 couples. 12, 24 couples. And your young bird team is normally, how many youngsters do you raise for racing? Um, I, I breed for youngsters around 150 max, maximum 200 youngsters. Okay, so and between... This year it was too much, it was 200, but it's too much. Next year, normally it will be, when it is 180, it's, uh, it's more than enough, I think. Okay, uh, Michael Peebler says, do you do any co-breeding uh, with, with other people? Do you do any co-breeding? Um, it's not a co-breeding. Uh, what what, what are, uh, I'm doing, um, my fr as I say, my friend Rick, Rick Coles, he is mostly racing with hens until five years ago. I'm only racing uh, with cocks. So uh, we do it since 2004. Um, from the first round of youngsters, uh, 20, 30, 40 hands uh, around this uh, amount. Uh, these hands, my hands go to the loft of recalls. And uh, some cocks, or also around 20, 20 cocks from recalls come to my loft. So um, we almost have the same, the same pigeons. For example, now this year, uh, Rick has also uh, three national ace pigeons. And the three pigeons are bred in my loft. The three hands uh, of my the, who is in the loft of uh, of Rick Holes or the national ace pigeons there. Super super results. Eddie Ortiz says, does he fly his birds separate by sex? So I'll go with this because you've already talked about uh, the widowhood and how you do that. Your young birds that you fly, mm -hmm. do you separate the sex? Yeah. Um, the. As I told you, the, the hands uh, from my first round of youngsters go to the loft of recalls yeah? and the cocks from the loft of recalls come to my loft. So all these cocks go to uh, two lofts. So when I start racing uh, these cocks, they are uh, 50, uh, no, around 40 cocks in the two, these two lofts. And uh, after the first, uh, no, the second uh, short distance race from Clermont, that's 180 kilometer. And then there is an old hen in their nest cell. And uh, they, are, they are separate when I, uh, and they are alone, the, these cocks and this loft, as they are not together with, with hens. So these cocks, will, I will raise them uh, as with over. And, and, and the young cocks on, on the young bird team, the, the 40 cocks, you will pair them up to old hens. Yeah. Now, my question for you is, why old hens? Um, an, old hen, an, old, an old hen is uh, easier to pair up with the, old, with the young cock. Um, she can give her, him more love, I think. Um, and, it's for, for, and it's easier to... to that the young cock is pairing up with this old hen because um, it's his own uh, nest cell and in this nest cell I put her in and after three weeks he, he is, uh, yeah, who, how do you call it, paired up with him? Yeah, yeah, he's paired up. Yeah. And, and the older hen calms them, it's easier. She's calmer, she's easier, she's not so, uh, uh, so, so scared. Sometimes a young, young hen, when you put her with, with the young cock, and then you can have some problems with an old hen. You have uh, a lot less less problems than uh, than with young hens. Okay. Uh, next question from Constantine, and this is in a different language, but I think it says, 
He used some medicine in the racing season to prevent re stuff like respiratory or trichomonas. Do, do you have still an, an hour? <laughs> he said that to me at, guys, he said that to me at 4 o'clock. We didn't start this till 7 o'clock. Uh, that's a good line. I'm going to keep that one. No. In the beginning, yes, I used every three weeks. I used it, uh, a three-week system. But no, I, use, I don't use it anymore. But no, I, I first I will explain that the three-week system. So at the first week, I, I, I had a look for, for example, for coccidiosis. And when there is nothing, then I, don't, I didn't give anything for coccidiosis. No. I, the second week, I was all, all three weeks, I was giving something for trichomonas. Mostly uh, pills from, uh, based on ronidazole or uh, metronidazole. So, so Redzol. Yeah, Redzol, Redzol, Redzol okay. S or uh, these, these things. And in the third week, I gave some, something for the respirants. Yeah, there was an antibiotica. Uh, for respirant, was it Solidox or um, uh, what are the other um, uh, amoxicillin or these things? I, I, I give every three weeks uh, something and it, it, it works very well. But what I saw when I gave the week, I gave something from trichomonas, the um, condition goes down. Since uh, yeah, I think it's now four or five years, I don't do it anymore with the, for the trichomonas. Um, every time I basket my pigeon, I give them the yellow drops. Every time. Every time I basket them, because, b before I put them in a the basket, I give them one yellow drop in and, the uh, and mouth. Um, and, and you do that for the young pigeons? Any I pigeons that you're racing? Any pigeons I race, I do everything. Because I know, and it is the, my, uh, the vet who told me, when you, give me you, when you give the pigeon one yellow drop, then they are uh, 48 hours free from trichomonas. So when they are in the basket at uh, Tuesday evening, when they have to race at Saturday, they are still free from trichomonas. So you solve the problem without, uh, without giving them um, strong uh, medicines. And from the respirants, um, that is always uh, on an advice from the, from the vet. So yeah, and, and you guys can do that here because you have vets. So you ask the vets, the vets tell you. Yeah. If, if you didn't have the vets, I'm saying you don't treat if the vet says not to treat. No, I, when it is not necessary, I don't use it. <clears throat> okay. I know five years ago, I, did, I, I gave it when there was no problem. I also gave some antibiotica, but it's not necessary. Okay. And, and I know it's not necessary because when they are good and they are in a good condition, maybe it's even better to, to don't give it. Um, for example, this year and the start and the start of the season, I gave them a how do you call it? I think a cure. A cure, yeah. A cure for ten days with uh, the the thing from um, Vincent Schroeder, amoxy amoxicillin. Uh, Amoxicillin, yes. Uh, clam orniclam. It was uh, the, the the product is or uh, the name is orniclam. I gave it from for ten days. And my pigeons were in the start of the season were very clear on the head where everything was all, was all right. So I didn't give, and they don't believe me, but it's true. I didn't give anything else for the rest of the season because I, they were in a good hilt and it was not necessary to give them. But if you ask me what what's your secret, or maybe, but I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm vaccinating my pigeon very often. Now, now, guys, listen, no. listen to what Chris is going to say. There's more questions. Annex Gautier from around here, she says hello. You know Annex from G Pigeon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she says hello. She is on. She's watching. Um, oh, she's watching. She's that's, watching. There's no, no pressure I, on you no, now. <laughs> I don't say anything anymore because that's one of my, highest, my, my biggest concurrents. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, guys, I want you to listen to how Chris vaccinates. Now, be quiet. Don't ask questions and listen. This is, I think this is very interesting. So Chris, with the young pigeons, how do you vaccinate your young birds? When I separate them from their parents, the first thing I do is, is them vaccinate them. And I vaccinate them from um, paramixo rota. That's the first time. So the first time is paramixo rota. Yeah. Bang. When the last youngster is on the loft, so for example, you... they are five or 10 years younger than the, than the oldest one because 
I, when I'm breathing, um, I lay the eggs, the first round of eggs from the breeders. Mm -hmm. I lay them um, under the um, feeding couples. Yes. And then they can start again. So the youngest young, young, uh, youngsters are uh, two weeks younger than the oldest. Mm -hmm. So when the youngest young, youngster is on the uh, loft of the youngsters, um, three weeks later, I vaccinate them again. Again, paramyxorota. So right off the start, per paramyxorota, first vaccine. Yeah. Three weeks after that, Again. Again. So they've now been vaccinated for the same vaccine twice. Yeah. Then what happens? Three weeks later, I vaccinate them again, but no for circo virus. So then you vaccinate them three weeks after that for circle virus. No. How many times you do that? Once. Once for circle. No. Then what do you do? Three weeks later, I vaccinate them for pox. Three weeks after that, he vaccinates for pox. So he's given mm -hmm. them four needles. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Three weeks later, I vaccinate them for E. coli. <laughs> three weeks later, he vaccinates for E. coli. Mm -hmm. Every three weeks. Mm -hmm. Anything else? When there are even a weeks enough, I should uh, vaccinate them for paratyphus. Another three weeks, paratyphoid, yes. And then it's no time anymore because we have to learn them. We have to learn training, we have to, to, to raise them. And last year, um, there was one week I didn't give my youngsters uh, on race because it was very bad weather and then I have vaccinated them again for paramyxo herpes. Okay, so they've gotten almost six to seven vaccines. Yeah. And you're not treating, uh, you believe a lot of your health is coming from these every yeah. three weeks vaccine. Because I believe and also when I discuss about it with, with, uh, with the vet and not only with one vet, I believe every time you give it, it then their immune system um, is working. And the only thing I see now, um, I don't have any problem anymore with uh, adenovirus or uh, with other, with other uh, things. Um, and I see my youngsters, they are stronger than before. Uh, and I think it's uh, about the, the vaccinations. Um, and now I see a lot of also fans here in, in my region um, are trying to do the same. And there is a lot less uh, problem with, for example, the adenovirus. Uh, so I believe in it. And I don't have to, to give them a lot of uh, medicine during the season. Um, and I think, I hope, and I think it's about that. But I will tell you sure in five years. So. We have to, this is a plan guys. We're going yeah. to see this is a five year plan. And yeah. hey, we got hours and hours and hours. Uh -huh. uh, Ricardo uh, Bellhove from Team Vandenpash in Holland. Mm -hmm. He says, hello, hello. How am I enjoying the trip? Hey, I'm in, I'm in pigeon heaven. You don't have to worry about this. Alex Gautian says, she's a big fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a big fan of Anik. There you but go. My wife is listening, so I have to. <laughs> Sorry about that. Don't don't worry. Okay. Uh, another question. Donnie Crate says, "Does do do you use any probiotics? Any probiotics? Mm. Yes, a, a lot because I give the the Pro Evolution uh, mixture from Vanderbys, and in this mixture there is a, a pallet." And there is a prebiotica, probiotica. No, it's a prebiotica. It's no probiotica, I think. I don't know. I, I think it has a difference in prebiotica pre and uh, probiotica. But I also use uh, some probiotica from the vet, from Pascal uh, Lano. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, it calls PFAP, and I use it often on, on the food also. Okay, and yeah, you you were one of the 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 flyers that really tested the, the revolution mix from mm -hmm. Ben Robice. Yeah. Good mix? Very good mix. I'm very um, uh, happy with that because uh, I started to give it uh, together with Dirk and uh, um, Guy van der Rohe himself. Uh, I think, no, it's three years ago. And uh, for me, it's a very good mixture because the pellet, the prebiotica was in, who were in this mixture. They eat them, they eat them very. Mm -hmm. Don't they don't let them in the in, in the feeding? Um, how do you say it? Feeding cell, feeding buck. Uh, oh, fat. And um, it's very good for Ingrid help you vertering. They they digestion. 
they digest it yeah. well. Okay, that's, okay, it's very good for that. And so I believe it's also when when the digest is yes. uh, it's very good. So I think they yeah yeah they digest it good. Uh, Marco from Portugal says, can you ask please, Chris, what mixtures does he give the the racing uh, give in the racing season? And what's the brand? So you use the Van Robys, mm -hmm. the Revolution. Are mm -hmm. there any certain ones, the mm -hmm. names? For the youngsters, I start when I separate them from the parents. It's always number uh, 49. So, especially for Robis. youngsters from, from Van Robys with the palette in it. With the, the palette. The Revolution mixture uh, 49 uh, from Van Robys. For the um, old patients, for my uh, old widowers, during the winter is number 16, uh, winter and rest. Okay. But in the beginning of the season, I start with uh, 75, also with a palette in it. It's a light mixture. And when we go to the, that's, this mixture is okay for uh, short distance races. But when we go further, uh, I use the 53 mixture. So in the beginning of, yeah, and a little, uh, a little heavier, much heavier. Much heavier. Yeah. So in the start of the week, it's always uh, seven, uh, 53. And last four or five meals, it depends on the weather, um, I use the 53 mixture. Okay. Uh, Mark Carnell says, Ryan, where can we get the herpes vaccine? I have a bad outbreak. Uh, I have no clue in Canada. Again, it's a tricky one to find. You might have to call seagulls. Uh, and the old birds are... Uh, oh, and Constantine asks, with your old birds, what type of vaccine with your breeders and your racers that you do? Um, now we are 20 October, so in the start of October, end of uh, September, I vaccinated all my pigeons again. All my uh, breeders, races, all my pigeons are vaccinated uh, again for Paramyxorota. So now, that's it, Paramyxorota. Now at the end at, uh, of October, I vaccinate them again for Paratyphus. Okay. Okay. And then I do, it's, it's finished and during uh, when they are breeding, and they, are, they have eggs, then I give them uh, for five days, and that's the only uh, time I do it. I give them for five days the TKK, that's for Trico from the Red Schilder. Okay. Yeah? Um, after breeding their round of youngsters, um, my racers go in the Avery, mm -hmm. yeah? and then I vaccinate them again, but it's the vet who vaccinate them again from uh, um, paramixo with box. Paramixo with box. Yeah. Then they are in the Avery until the uh, beginning of March. Then they come out and then they uh, vaccinate them again for paratyphus. And then they are ready to start the season. Wow. Guys, you're hearing it here right from Chris. Uh, he, he, I think you're a man of leaving very few stones unturned. Do you know what this means? Your no. your your focus. You really focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think this is how Chris gets some of these super results. I know we are on. You guys are asking questions, which is great. But Chris, now I'm going to say, can you please show me a pigeon? <laughs> which one? You pick, my friend. Guys, you're not going to be disappointed in what Chris pulls out. Uh, keep your questions coming. Uh, this is exclusive. Chris De Baker. Here we are. Who's the first one we're seeing? That's Hain. Hain is uh, this year six national ace pigeon by the yearlings uh, on the great middle distance. Huh? He is also, I will show his wing, yeah. he is also second best pigeon of Belgium on five national races. And he is beat by Yellow Rosiers, and Yellow Rosiers, his pigeon is one out of uh, a hand of mine. Huh? So, um, this hain is from the same bloodlines as the other um, ace pigeons. His father is also a half-brother of the father, for example, from the second national ace pigeon on the great middle distance with the old birds. Um, his brother from this pigeon mm -hmm. is this year, uh, by the youngsters, also five national ace pigeons in a small middle distance. And his brother from last year was also 15th national ace pigeon, also at a small distance, uh, small middle distance. Huh? So these pigeons, they do it very well on short distance. They may give me first prices in short uh, uh, distance, 
to give me also this one was first provincial of Argenton, second national of Argenton, uh, and Argenton is 500 km. So they do it from 75 km till uh, 600 km. Question Are you going to race this pigeon again? Yes. Now, most people stop pigeons. No, no, I want to I wanna race with the best pigeons. I want to race with pigeons who can make the difference. And, and we, we talk about people uh, stopping pigeons after one race. People might say to you, you're crazy to race this super quality pigeon. No. Why? Why do you race it? Why don't you listen and stop it? <laughs> well, no, I can, I can sell that pigeon. That's true. I can have a lot of money of that pigeon. That's also true. But then I can't race him anymore next year. And you live for, you love racing. I love racing and I love winning races. And hey, and these he, are dangerous pigeons to race with because they okay. can win. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No risk, no fun. That's right. But I, I'm saying, <laughs> playing with a pigeon like this, you know the talent of the pigeon. You know how to condition the pigeon. You know these aren't lucky pigeons. These are very good pigeons. Uh -huh. And it's playing with, with a super gun. You're okay. playing with a superstar. And it's, that's, that's, you believe in the pigeons. The only thing i honest, when they give me and they uh, are telling the weather will be very bad this weekend, I don't, so I don't give this pigeon. Meat. But I also believe the guys who are, um, uh, release the pigeons, uh, that they only release the pigeons when the weather is good enough. Okay. So, um, okay, shit can happen, so that's, that's true, but I want to raise with not the good pigeons, but I want to raise with the best pigeons. So I don't sell him, I will race him again. And okay, Mike Green has a question. Uh, how long does he race his pigeons? How many years, how long will you race a cockbird? At that moment, there are cocks on my uh, race loft uh, who are uh, already four years old. Four years yeah. old. So, I, no, three years old, no, at that moment, so I will race until they are uh, four years old. This year, I um, take off the last three from 2019. So these pigeons, I don't raise them anymore next year. Okay, Andrew, he has a question. He says, Chris, what does he look at in a pigeon the most? The feathers, the back, the vent bones? What are you looking for? Um, in the beginning, I don't look at... I can handle a beautiful pigeon. And what is a beautiful pigeon when he has soft, uh, soft feather, when, when he has a nice wing? But... Um, the only thing who can say that when it is a good pigeon is the basket. They have to raise. Some, um, I showed you this afternoon a pigeon. Uh, it, mm -hmm. was, it's one, it is one of my very best yearlings this year. But he has a very weak rug back. It's yeah, the only okay. one. I know it's the only one. But I think in all types and all models and all colors of pigeons, they are good pigeons. They are very good pigeons. But... I like not a big pigeon. I like a middle, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a small to medium yeah, sized pigeon. A, a medium sized uh, pigeon um, with soft feather, uh, a nice head, a uh, clever head. But when is it a clever head? For me, that's a clever head <laughs> pigeon um, because he is looking. You, you yeah. see how he, he, this pigeon is a super flyer. Yeah. Do you see how he's wanting to be on the show? He's participating. Yeah. He's not acting stupid. And he, he, it's like he was meant to be here at this moment. And, and you guys, this is, we can't talk about cleverness. You have to see it. But Chris, you see it instantly. And I see it as well. He, he's handling the loud noise. He's never been in here. Is this his first time in here? Yeah. He's handling a, this yeah, very, very well. He, he was never here. But I can't. The only thing well, I can I can look inside the head of the pigeon. You can? I can't. You haven't tried that yet. Nah. <laughs> no. Ma ah. You ah. know, when you have an ugly pigeon and he makes very good results, you can see something what's very beautiful on, on as a pigeon. <laughs> Nor then he has a nice wing or he has good, good uh, fat bones. or. Uh, He's looking better than he actually ah. is. Ah. And uh, Mike Green asks, what gets a pigeon into your breeding loft? How does a pigeon make it into your breeding loft? First of all, the, for example, I don't sell this pigeon. And for example, next year he will make a, another very good season. Then he goes to the breeding loft. For me, a breeder, I, 
I think you have more chance to breed from the very good breeders, uh, from the very good freezers, to have also a very good breeder. Um, sometimes you have a couple of pigeons, and the one is a very good one, and the other one is a very bad one, and then some fanciers are telling breed from the bad one and you will have good youngsters and the the good one he will and i don't believe in it i believe um it must be a very good racer also to have it on the on the breed on the breeding of but i have to say sometimes i put also a, a brother a late bread and i when i like the pigeon i and and i can handle him uh he is very nice in the hand um, sometimes also I put them on the breeding loft. So, but I only have 28 places on my breeding loft, so there is not so much place. Yeah, well, you guys, you're hearing it with Chris. Uh, Gang One says, Ryan, you okay? Yes, I am doing good. Chris, you want to show us another pigeon? Uh, uh, we're enjoying this. Guys, if you have questions for Chris, now is the time to ask them. Don't be shy, he's not going to bite. I promise. We've already been at this for I'm full. not sure, but... <laughs> I think you might want to yell at me a few times today, but hey, that's okay. Chris, who is... So, this, this one is a young bird. Okay. Yeah? His name is Icarus. Repeat this again. Icarus. It's a, a Greek name. It's like Eros? No, yeah, but... Better. Okay. But this one... <laughs> um, that's the best pigeon of Belgium on four national races. For young birds. For young birds. They are only four national races and that's the best one for all of the uh, four national races. Good. Um, you know, that, that, that pigeon was on the short distance, not my best pigeon. He is, just, he is especially my best pigeon on the national races. Mm -hmm. And the competition in the national races, again, for people that aren't sure, how many thousands of pigeons is he flying against? Uh, the first race from Bouge was from uh, almost 30,000 pigeons. Um, last race he did was from, uh, I think it was, I don't remember exactly, but it was almost 15,000 uh, pigeons. Um, also from Chateau, I think it were uh, 27,000 pigeons. So this one, he his. Um, Baddest price was the 52 national price from uh, Chateau. Uh, from, I, yeah, it was Chateau. One question here. Uh, Christian, how do you say this last name? De Keizer. De Keizer? Kurt De Keizer? Yes, yeah, from Christian. Christian, from Annex. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah, says, yeah. the best in Belgium. So you're getting another compliment. Keep talking about this pigeon here. This is another pigeon. Take a look at in Chris's hands. Look at the pigeon is confident. The pigeon is supposed to be here. You can see this. What a but smart head. small thing at that moment. Well, yes, this yes. is as ugly as show, yeah, uh, but it, this is okay. How would you describe him in the body? It's also, um, you know, uh, well, that's the middle marcher. Uh, middle, uh, middle. Medium side. Medium side, yeah, medium side. Um, very, very good closed, strong, strong bones, um, nice, nice wing. Yeah. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Keep that open for just a second, Chris, and I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit. We don't have the best lighting, but we're going to make do with this. And again, the best of four national races. Yeah. Big, big numbers of pigeons. This pigeon's right up at the top. Good in headwinds. Uh, also, very good in headwind because one of the races was, was with a very very hard headwind. Um, he has also a very nice, uh, very nice eye. Huh? He, he does. It's dark in here, but this pigeon yeah. has a gorgeous eye and he's got a nice head to him. Look at the shape. He's not a big pigeon at all. No. He fits, no. And, and I will say, uh, the muscles on these pigeons and the, the arm, it's a short arm. Most 90% of these pigeons very short in the arm. The backs are tight, but they're loaded up in the chest with muscles. Muscles on it. This pigeon's got muscles on its eyelids, trust me. And look at the nice head. Look at the cleverness. I'm a very loud person, and this pigeon's not panicking at all. These are smart pigeons. Uh, Gang One has a question. Does he pair up early for, for one loft races? Does he send to one loft races? I don't like it because I don't have the time. You should uh, say you have only to breed the, the youngsters and to put them on one loft races. 
Oh, but I, 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 I also, I, I did it once for Pattaya mm -hmm. uh, with four pigeons. The result was good, was very good. I made also a lot of money with that, but I didn't, I didn't again uh, this year. Um, and why? I don't know because I, I do not have the time to look for it and all these things. Um, and I raise my pigeons by my, by myself. You but it is possible to do it. But when I can have um, uh, cooperation with someone else, mm -hmm. uh, maybe then I then I should do it. Okay. Uh. And, and again, uh, flying here in Belgium, you can live a dream. You can fly anything you want here. This is the mecca of pigeon mm -hmm. racing. So one-off racing, I still say for, for the people in Belgium, they don't focus on it as much as people all around the world because this is the mecca of pigeon racing. Constantine asks, with this pigeon here, so this was a young bird, you've moved them into the, the widowhood loft. Uh, mm -hmm. How in the springtime- I'm, I'm racing them again next year also. You're gonna race Also them. for that pigeon, the, so a lot of fans are telling me you are stupid to do it. No, he's not stupid. What he's playing with are loaded guns. This, mm -hmm. is, this, is, this, is, the smart, this is a smart man. You know, the father of this pigeon mm -hmm. was, was also winner of first provincial of Poitiers. Poitiers is 525 kilometers. His half brother was already sex national ace pigeon. So from the same father first, Provincial of Poitiers, six national ace pigeon, no four national pigeon, uh, ace pigeon, and best pigeon on four national races. I think we have a very good breeder. I think so too. And his results of his father was also very good. So he gave me also a first provincial uh, victory. Guys, you're hearing it now. Chris, I'm going to ask the question as Constantine says: When you start uh, in the spring, after the winter season with the old birds. How will you start, what's your routine for them to get them into condition before the first race? Well, as, I, as I told you, um, after they um, breed one round of youngsters, at the end of uh, around 20 uh, January, uh, I put them in the aviary. And I put them in the aviary and then um, I gave them not so much food, I gave them only 25 gram food a day. So they, they don't become fat at that moment. So you cut, the, you cut the weight down, you measure the feed by the grams. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. do you, you actually measure it on weight for real? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You yeah. measure it? Yeah. Okay, so, so they're, they're on a measured weight. It's a lighter mix. It's a lighter mix. It's a mix from also from Van Robijs, um, uh, winter and rest. Um, and I give it only 25 grams uh, a day. So they are very hungry. They, they don't become fat at the end of the, of the winter. And in uh, the beginning of March, I put them back on their loft again. And then I start feeding uh, with um, 55 uh, mixture from Van der Beis. Then I let them training in the beginning uh, two times uh, a week, then three times. And then um, after one, after 10 days, I let them every day uh, training. So they are ready, they train after two weeks, they train or training for uh, at least one hour. And you use a flag? With the old birds, no. But with the young birds, uh, always. Always. No. You, you, yes, okay. And uh, with your old birds, you get them flying. You want them to fly once a day no. for an hour. For an hour. After the hour, you call them? They do in? it on, on their self. On their I, self. I don't have to put a flag in the, in the air or something, no. If they don't want to fly, what do you do? If they want to land? They want to land after 15 minutes. Does this bother you? I give them uh, a little bit more light food. A little more light food. No. Okay. So, no. Uh, road training for your old birds. How many times do you take them in the car? Three, few, uh, three or four or max five times till 30 kilometers. And then they go to the, um, with the club for 75 kilometers. Okay, and then you start oh. racing them every, mm -hmm. week. every uh, week. And during the, the old bird season, do you train them in the car at all? No. 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 So no, no training. Old birds never training in the car during the week. You're hearing it, guys. Chris is saying, okay, Gregory has a question. Mr. Chris, if you were to choose lines from your loft for weekly racing of 300 to 500 kilometers, the grandchildren of which breeding pigeons would you choose? That's a good question. 
I didn't, I didn't very good understand it. Okay, so he says, Chris, if you were to choose a line from your loft mm -hmm. for weekly races of 300 to 500 kilometers the distance, mm -hmm. the, the grandchildren of which breeding pigeons would you choose? That's not so difficult because, no, at that moment in my breeding loft, I have four brothers from Salome. Salome was a, a, a son of Nick. From these four brothers, um, but that's a pair. The Sal uh, Salome, my Janine, Janine was also uh, a daughter of Krista. I have from another pair, George, Malmike. Mieke was also a, a, a daughter of uh, Krista, who was fourth national ace pigeon. Huh? And when I pair up the four brothers with four sisters from the other pair, they give me all national ace pigeons, all of them. So Don Pedro was this year the father of the second national ace pigeon and was already father of the 12th national ace pigeon. His brother Diego is father from the um, Diego, the, from, from the second national, from Elodie Ace, from second national Ace Pigeon. Another brother, Blicknick, uh, was brother from the second national Ace Pigeon. And this year, uh, she did it again, but because now she is third national Ace Pigeon. Uh, and the other brother, Camilo, is already father from the five national Ace Pigeon. And there is another brother, but he is no. I gave him to Rick, to Rick Coles. He is in the breeding loft of Rick. And this one is father from the first national ace pigeon. Huh? And there was another, a sixth one, who was in another loft in East Flanders, huh? who is already father from uh, very good uh, pigeons. And this one, this week, I brought him back to my loft. So I, uh, this, this time I have five uh, brothers who gave me uh, five national ace pigeons. Wow, folks, did you hear so, that? And a few out of these brothers, out of these national ace pigeons and brothers of the national ace pigeons, um, I already have ace pigeons again. There was an old fancier, maybe you know the name Silver Toya, who told me a few Toya. years ago um, it are the ace pigeons who breed ace pigeons. Ace pigeons breed ace pigeons. And now he's dead, he died, mm -hmm. but he's right. He's right. Mm -hmm. And you have to listen, right? No. If you see it, you're, you're hearing it right here from Chris. Uh, Andrew, he has a question. During the molting season, does he give anything extra, i.e. supplements or extra food or extra something in the water in the, in the molting season? Yes. Um, I'm, I have to start with... I give every day, almost every day, I give, I give beer hests. So how do you... Burge yeah. Okay. Directly from the brewery. Directly from the brewery? Yes. So this is real burge Yes. No dried beer, beer, beer hest. So how do you call it? Burge yeast. Burge yeast. Uh, that's, Your it's, English is good. It's directly <laughs> from, the, from the brewery. So um, I have every three weeks another... Uh, a new a new bucket with, uh, okay from uh, from the brewery so and, uh, i put it on the foot and on the foot i put also the uh, red powder the minerals they are the pink minerals and so i didn't i do not place uh, a little um pick stone no pick stone on the on the loft no i put it directly on the foot so that they have that every every day every day so now, uh with the so you mix on the feed the burge yeast the pink mineral on mm -hmm. the feed. Yeah. What do you? Uh, how do you get it to stick to the feed? What do you use to make it stick? The, the 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 the, the yeah. What do you put on the feed to make the powder stick to the feed? But no, it's not the powder. It's it's directly from the from the brewery. So it's wet. It's oh. it's still wet. Okay. So yeah. see, I'm used to Burgi's powder. It's a powder. No, no, but that's a stupid idea, I think, because yes. when, when it is in the, in the brewery, shit now. <laughs> it's, it's wet. Yes. So in your, in your uh, manure, you have to dry it and then you have to make it wet again. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, 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 do, I do that. Don't do that pro, pro, process. I use directly the brewery, the burgeist yeast from the, from the brewery. Yeah, so I've never seen wet burgeist. I've never, I've never seen it. 
So I, I'm interested to see. I, I maybe after no, it's a, I see it. It's a pity at that moment. You don't have any. I, I don't have any. No, no, so, no, no. But I'm sure if I go to a brewery, mm -hmm. I can get it. Mm -hmm. I've always used the powder. So you have the wet burge yeast. You put it on the feed. You soak the feed. How long do you soak the feed for? Uh, how long do you wet the feed? Do you leave it overnight or do you just put no, it on? I put it on. I, I mix it. I do feed the it. red powder, the pink powder on it and it's ready. It's ready. I can give it. Okay. Hey, th that's good. Guys, you learned the tip. There's another way to give burge yeast. Does he feed barley? Do you feed barley? Barley? Uh, barley, barley, the brown grain, it's long. Uh, Barlow? Uh, 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 it's in the light mix. Yeah, you, in the mix, I there's think, barley. I think yes. it's in the... It's, in the diet mix, uh, in the light mix, yes. He does feed barley, you don't feed barley oh, straight. Herst, herst. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. How it's, do you say it again? Herst. herst. It's, in the, it's in the light mix, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michael Peevler asks, any types of greens or vegetables you use? Any types of uh, plants? No. No. When should I have time, I should do it. But you've never done but it. I, 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 yeah, I did it before. For example, um, um, and, and the, in the Avery I give uh, salad. Uh, uh, kale, the, the lettuce. Kale, and they like it. And when they know it, they like it. But I don't have time to do it. But And I think it's not... Uh, not necessary. It's bad. It's good for the pigeon, and they like it. But it's not necessary. Okay, uh, guys, you guys are asking some great questions. Chris, do you have anything else you want to show us? <laughs> guys, keep your questions coming in. Chris is on fire today. Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. We're bringing you the best of the best from Belgium. Oh boy, here's another smart one. So Who that is, is that is Hirik. Hirik is uh, the best pigeon on long distance this year on four national races. He is fourth national ace pigeon, but on four national races, he is the best pigeon of Belgium. Huh? He gave me also, so long, long distance is more than 600 or 700 kilometers. For example, he has five national on Cahors. He is first provincial of Aurillac. He was fourth provincial of Limoges. Um, that's an extraordinary pigeon. I never had such a pigeon for these distance. So, that is not one of my bloodlines because that's a pigeon I bought from my neighbor. From for my neighbor, this uh, my neighbor has the pigeons for 600, 700 kilometer, and that's the son of the first national of Suyak. That's his father was also first national of Suyak. This one I don't race him anymore. Why not? Because I shoot stupid when I lose him. Because I. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna get scared uh, now. Come on. No. <laughs> Normally I should race him and don't um, play, don't trigger me because otherwise he is in the, on the race loft next year. But no, I don't do it because um, I need the pigeons also who are also very good with the, with the, with the headwind on the 600 kilometer and he, he is doing it. Headwind? He, also with the headwind and at that moment he is best pigeon of Belgium. And I believe he has also the the, the possibility to to be a, uh, a very good breeder because he's an, he has a nice eye. Even if I don't know anything about eyes, he is a nice uh, type of pigeon. Of pigeon is also a medium pigeon, very soft from uh, the feather. Um, so I made a decision and I put him on the breeding breeding loft. And, and again, Maybe I, it's a stupid idea. I don't know. I, I think you have enough good ones. I think you can, can hold back a little bit. There's something about them you want to breed out of them. But again, guys, take a look at the intelligence. The pigeon's looking at us. The pigeon's not worried. The pigeon sees the cat over there. It's, it's, everything is calm. These are super pigeons. Uh, ABC Lofts, he asks, uh, we talked about a little bit of your, your old bird training. Your young birds in the car. How much road training with your young pigeons That's do you That's another do? story. Uh, uh -oh. Can I put them back? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> With the young birds, I do a lot of work of it uh, for it. Um, when they are oh, almost uh, four, three months old, four months old, it depends. It depends on my um, work. When I have uh, a holiday, when I have a vacancy, or how do you, when I don't have to work for two weeks during. Um, uh, in, in April, then I take my pigeons and I 
I, pardon, I start training them. Train them in the car. I training them in the car. The first time is for two two kilometers, then four, then uh, then six. Uh, another time six kilometer. When they came came all together at home, then I go to eight kilometer. When I came all together at home, I go, yeah, and I do it well, 15, 20 times till thirty five kilometer. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, when the weather is good enough, I put them with the club for a short distance, 75 km, and then the season is start. And normally, during the week, uh, in the beginning of the season, I bring them um, back. I bring them with the car uh, for, for 35 or 40 km. So roughly once a week yeah. in the season, you'll one, train them one. Yeah. And then later on the season, um, I bring them back again with the car. And when they come home, then for the widowers, their hand is there. Uh, uh, for the other system, when the youngsters are together with, uh, then they are they are also um, together, hands and cooks. And then they are ready to basket them at Thursday. I never uh, show a hand uh, before basketing. Um, they have seen then their partner during the week, and then it's finished. Uh, and they can they are ready to basket them on Thursday. Okay. Uh, one thing I will say about Chris. Chris, you told an old gentleman in this area that wants to win in young bird racing. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the greatest things I have heard. No, this is really good. I like how he put, puts it. You told him, you told the old man that want, 80 years old and he wants to win at young bird racing. That, that's, I like that old man. Mm -hmm. It's already, in my opinion, number one. You told them, what does he have to do to be good with the young pigeons? Um, he told me um, the relationship between me and my young pigeons, it, 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 is, it doesn't work. For his whole career, it doesn't work. So he, he doesn't have a relationship yeah, with the He doesn't the have the, the good and uh, he, he don't find the good system. And the first thing and, uh, I say then, and that's the most important thing I say, you have to make a good relationship with your young birds. You have to be their friend. And then it will go up. Ask it to Anik. Anik is also playing with her young birds. And and you play with the young birds. You said to me, and guys, he said you don't want to be their friend. You want to be their best friend. No. You want to make that loft. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you try to become with the young birds friends with all the pigeons. Mm -hmm. When I darken it, when I close the curtains at the evening, then it's a little bit dark and uh, on, on the loft and I, I go to fight with them. No, I don't have, have go to fight. They, they have to fight with me. I go to them and then they uh, have to fight with me. And All you, of them. And I don't do it for minutes and minutes with one, with one pigeon. I go with my hand over all the nest cells and then they come to fight with me. It's okay. But, but when there is one who is not coming to me, then I have to fight with them. So what, what Chris is saying is, when Chris puts his hand in front of the, the pigeon, and the pigeon comes up and fights you, that's a good sign. Cool. If the pigeon doesn't come to you, you start to pick a fight with him and mm -hmm. wake him up and mm -hmm. get him to play. Then I will be a longer time on my uh, on my loft. But longer time. Yeah, but for my wife is then not so happy. Well, you know what? He he's fighting <laughs> pigeons. This is like this is the Mike Tyson of Belgium right here. But but you you make the pigeons your friend. You play with them, and you said another thing. When you play fight with the pigeon, what's the secret to play fighting with them? They trust you, mm -hmm. they uh, they like you, um, and they will be your partner. Do you yeah. ever, when you play fight with them, do you ever beat them? Do you ever beat them in the play no, fight? No, they have to win. Why? They are, they, they, they are the chief of their cell. They are, that's their cell, that's their box, that's, that's from, from them. They have to win. Um, I must not be the winner. That's not my uh, my place. That's their place, and you have to can you can go to to him, to them. But they have to win the fight always. So so guys, remember that what you're saying. Remember what Chris is saying. You're trying to build confidence. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to bash them of the confidence. You're playing with them so they feel good. They they stand up, mm -hmm. and they they're working for you. And, and these these are small little motivations. Something that Chris does, and now we hear Anik does it as well. Little little things. You see how we find the little stories out, but it helps. Yeah. And and how? When did you start playing with the young pigeons like this? How did you How did you come up with this idea? Uh, 
they, they, I, I start when they are young, but when, when did I, I think I do it all my life, I think. All your life? Yeah. Just playing with them and learning? Yeah. But you have to, they have to trust you. And uh, for people wondering, you're first going to go in and start to do this. Uh, it's something that takes a little bit of time, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. you, it yeah. doesn't happen right away. But it takes a little, bit, a little bit of time, not especially, but you have to do it every day. And when you, when you put the young cocks into the loft, the babies, and they have their boxes, mm -hmm. as babies, you start to do it. Yeah. Right away. Yeah, right away. Right, right away yeah. He wings them, they go, they pick their boxes, and he, he starts this. He doesn't, he, everything he does is from the beginning. Yeah. And I, I told you guys at the beginning, Chris, every stone he tries to uncover to make it the best for his pigeons. I can tell you this man knows when his pigeons have a headache. I hear him talk about the pigeons, the way he sees and looks at the pigeons. He can see, he sees a lot, but I'll tell you how he does it. He watches the pigeons. No. You're, you're very focused on it. Mm -hmm. You have to watch, you have to see what's happening on the loft. And, and when the pigeon is not happy, you have to see it. And when there is, uh, sometimes when uh, results isn't, isn't there anymore, uh, then you have to ask why is the result not good anymore? What's what's happening? What's happening with that pigeon? It's just like like human. Um, uh, you have to see it. You have to to find it out. What's what's happening? That okay. Uh, Andrew asks any motivation tips. Uh, I.e., so any motivation tips. Two hens to a cock or an extra box during the racing. I never did it. Never. Never did it. But it's possible. It can help. The only thing I did, and then that's, for example, uh, two youngsters are pairing up in the floor on the on the loft, um, and my loft manager before he placed the the, the nests mm -hmm. shorter and shorter, with closer the, to closer, closer together. to closer, and I was asking, what uh, what have you done now? Why did why why have you did it? And uh, oh, that, that was very interesting. They're fighting with each other, and they don't do it anymore because it's not good. But I have to to say the day after we won the first provincial prize, the first provincial victory with one of them. So it worked. It worked, but it worked once. Only once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do it every week, same. So. Is there a motivation? Yes, there is a motivation. In the first weeks, they come home and they have a hen. They don't see their hen when they basket them. Huh? But after three weeks, they know the hen is there. And then later on on the, on the season, I bring them during the week. Also, when I uh, bring them uh, away with the car, then the hen is there. And in the last two races, uh, I bring them away with the car at the day I basket them. For example, at Thursday, and then for this year also at the last uh, last race, I let them together for three, two or three hours with their with their hen, uh, my young cocks, Chief. and they make they made a very good and very nice result of them. So what I'm saying is, you don't play the same sort of no. tricks all the time. You're you're kind of evolving mm -hmm. the motivation, no. giving them a little bit more because you don't want them to get stale. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you said when you fly pigeons. I, on the widowhood program with your cocks, for instance, you normally notice after about four years, the cocks, uh, they know the system. Yeah, they know the system, they become slower. They know when they come home, oh, my hen is there. So it's not necessary to, to, to fly very fast at home because they know they are, she's there. So they, they become uh, smarter, they become um, also, let's do it easier because on the easy way it works also. <laughs> Uh, Chris, I was going to ask, do you have any more pigeons you have to show? I have still one. One more pigeon, guys. We're going to show this last pigeon, then we're going to wrap this up. You guys have been great. And uh, did I lie to you guys? Hell no. Look at the quality of these pigeons. Second to none. Guy was right. Go see Chris. He's got the best of the best. Who is he? That's Giuseppe. Giuseppe is the first national ace pigeon. And a small middle distance in 20 and 21. And normally I raised him in 22, but the first time I let them free and let them um, training, there was a, a rufal, uh, a hawk, a hawk, in it. okay. And then I thought, oh, 
when he take this one, then I will have a problem. So I put them directly then on the on the breeding loft. And he has already uh, grandfathered this year from the first provincial of uh, uh, Orleans. So he was a very good racer, his first national ace pigeon. And he gave me over already a first provincial winner. So, And to be a first national ace pigeon, how tough is that? Uh, for the small medal distance, they have to race uh, four unbelievable top prizes and four races. But he did more than four. He did a, he he make five or six very top prizes. But the the story about this pigeon, he was never clocked my first pigeon, never. Never. He was always waiting till there was a second one, and then they came inside the, the loft, he was all, always turning around when he came home. And when they were with four, for example, with four together, then he was always, he was the last in, inside the loft because he was fighting with them till he was the last one in the loft. So the first, the last race, when you have to be the first national ace pigeon, I tried to let the other pigeons outside and that he came in first, but it, it doesn't work. The last race I had then I didn't have the first provincial prize I, I only had the second provincial prize but this one had the, the sixth provincial prize the stupid pigeon he <laughs> made me very <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a nice one he this, this pigeon can talk with me he is talking always with me and again you see all these winning pigeons do you see the calmness in them do you see the intelligence in them guys and you see the family, it's breeding winners after winners after winners after winners. I talk to all the supers and they say, you got to go for the best pigeons. Mm -hmm. This is the best of the best of the best. And, and you see it, 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 if you had a tree, you see it's nothing but winners here. The winners are breeding the winners. Yeah, and I, I don't sell all the, all the winners. No, I you keep, keep them for, for myself because it's from them and you can breed new winners. And that the most, and uh, for me, it's most. And when when you have a very good pigeon, don't sell him. Keep him for yourself and breed from him. So you have more chance to to breed a very good one for for the, from a very good one. And, and like we say, guys, Chris has the sweetest fruit from the tree because he don't sell the tree. So the tree keeps producing good fruit. Chris, uh, I think this was a great interview. Yes, guys, we are going to have Chris at Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. You're going to have to be patient. We came, we did the, 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 the loft visit, we look around, we talk. Next season, you are going to have pigeons from this gentleman. And will they be good? Yes, because why? He only selects from the best. His name means everything, super quality. One question, people win with your pigeons? Yes. <laughs> for example, um, I've beat this year for the, um, uh, I have the second best pigeon on five national races, a great middle distance. So you have the second best pigeon yeah. on but five middle distance races. Yellow Rosiers has the first, but the mother has one directly of my loft, for example. So producing. Mm -hmm. Ask to Anik. Anik has also, uh, I think it was the fourth uh, national on Argenton, I think. It was also one of uh, my loft. Uh, the a, a child, and I think she had also also this year a very uh, uh, good pigeon of of one of my loft. Also, for example, Anthony Maas, uh, first national ace pigeon on the long distance. The mother was on directly of my loft. He had also first national on Argentum, and she he was third, uh, also third ace pigeon. Uh, the father was on directly of my loft. Um, there are a lot. And I'm happy with that. I'm very happy that also other fanciers um, have good pigeons of, uh, uh, of, of my love. Guys, some top lofts in Belgium are playing with the pigeons and they are winning. You have nothing to worry about. This man has pigeons that will win on a heavy level. They can compete against thousands of pigeons and be up at the top. Uh, this has been a super interview. Andrew says, Ryan, thanks a million for asking questions. They always... You always give great interviews. Guys, I don't give the great interviews. It's the breeders. Uh, they give their very best. And you see here, uh, genuine, this is a pigeon man at heart. He, he eats, sleeps, breathes pigeons. I can see it in him. And I hope you guys see it too. Hey, Chris, I want to, uh, 
I, I've taken like seven hours of your time and we could keep going but all you night. Have to, you have still to pay for it. Eh? <laughs> Is it, there's an invoice coming guys and, and remember any invoices I get I just send it out online and you guys are going to have to pay for it no, um, no, 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 no. I, I wanted to say again thank you very much for uh, allowing not only Feathers Elite to come into your home and, and take up your Saturday but allowing my guests on, on the show to ask questions it was a lot of work eh? Uh, was it a lot of work? I don't know you tell no, me no 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 it was not uh, I, I enjoy it, it it was good. And guys, I could have started this earlier, but as Chris talked, my problem was I was I was asking for myself. I was really enjoying like, and guys, this when we do the loft tour and you see it, I'm going to get a little bit more in depth. This guy has some great ideas, a very simple but common sense. Uh, he's ruthless around the pigeons. I know that. Chris, that's your phone. That means we've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Hey, guys, remember, running right now, Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. We've got two auctions going. Stefan Steenberg and Zolt Pinter from Hungary. we got a Belgian and a Hungarian. They're up for grabs. Take a look. That was Chris. You know who I am. I'm done. I'm finished. Don't ask me for any more interviews today because two is enough. We did two Chris's in one day. We have one Chris that was six and a half feet tall and one Chris that was three and a half feet tall. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had a great, great day. You guys did great questions. And uh, I think that's it for me. I'm Ryan from Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions. Chris, thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. Bye for now. Bye.